let us continue the lecture from the previous topic. In our previous lecture, we saw that if a synchronous motor is running under lagging power factor condition, under that circumstance, if the excitation of the motor is increased, then the power factor of the motor starts increasing and it goes to the unity value. Again, it starts decreasing with leading power factor. Considering the excitations, in general, the motor may have three different states. One is underexcited, second one is normally excited, and the third one is overexcited condition of a synchronous motor. So we can write underexcitation, normal excitation, and finally overexcitation. A motor is said to be underexcited if we have EB is less than VS, which is supply voltage. And under such conditions, the current IS lags behind VS. That means the motor operates at lagging power factor. Next, the motor is said to be normally excited if the field excitation is such that where EB is equal to VS. The, and the motor is said to be overexcited when we have a field excitation such that where EV is greater than the supply voltage Vs. In general, under such conditions, the current IS leads Vs. So it can be concluded that if the synchronous motor is underexcited, it has a lagging power factor. As the excitation is increased, the power factor improves till it becomes unity at normal excitation. Under such conditions, the current drawn from the supply is minimum. If the excitation is further increased, the motor power factor becomes leading and that occurs under overexcited condition. Now let us plot the field current which is actually excitation on a synchronous motor versus the armature current that means motor current IS. Here, it is to be noted that the field current is always DC and the armature current is AC. Now, if we take Y axis and X axis, in X axis we are going to take field current and in Y axis we are going to take armature current that is the IS. Suppose we are starting from here for a particular field current at constant load we are getting the armature current IS having this value. Well, if we consider the magnitude only, then let's say this value corresponds to this point. For this particular field current, we are getting this IS current. Now, if we increase field current, that means we are increasing excitation. In that case, well, initially, the armature current will start decreasing. So for higher amount of field current, the armature current will be decreasing. If we keep plotting, keep plotting, the armature current will be minimum at this point. So it will have a minimum point at this value. Then if we keep increasing the field current, that is if we keep increasing the excitation, again armature current will start increasing. We can see the magnitude from this figure. So it will start increasing. So if we connect all the dots, we'll get a shape like this. This is at constant load. Suppose that load is L1. And you will find this curve, which will look like a shape of V, English letter V. That is why it is called, this curve is called synchronous motor. V curve. You will perform this experiment in the lab where you will place a DC ammeter in order to measure this field current and you will place an AC ammeter in order to measure magnitude of this stator current and you take an initial value of IF which is lower than the normal then start increasing the IF current and take the value of IS current for each value of IF. Then plot all the values and connect all the points and you will get this V curve for a particular load L1. Now from our previous lecture 
we saw that for a constant excitation, if we increase the load on a synchronous motor, the current drawn by the stator will be increased. So we can say for, for fixed amount of excitation, if we increase the load, the current IS will be increased and it will start from here. With that amount of load, if we keep increasing the field current, then it will follow this line and that will have another v-shaped curve like this this is at constant load let's say this load is l2 if we keep increasing the load the next curve will look like this in this way we'll get different different v curve for different types of load now for any particular load you will get the minimum armature current that is is current when the power factor is one so at this point you will get the power factor is equal to one and right side of this minimum current represents the leading power factor area and left side of this minimal current represents the lagging power factor area so this is lagging power factor and this is the leading power factor therefore by controlling the field current of a synchronous motor the reactive power supplied to or consumed by the power system can be controlled next synchronous condenser what is synchronous condenser an overexcited Synchronous motor running under no load condition. So, a synchronous condenser is a DC excited or we can say over excited synchronous motor whose shaft is not connected to anything but spins freely. When a synchronous motor will operate as synchronous condenser, its purpose is not to convert electrical power to mechanical power. That means the synchronous motor will not be used as synchronous motor, rather it will be used to either generate or absorb reactive power as needed. Or we can say it will be used to improve power factor. The things will be more clear if we draw the vector diagram for synchronous condenser suppose this is the supply voltage vs this is the axis when we say the motor is running under no load condition the torque angle will be very low so let's take torque angle having very low alpha so this alpha will get due to the load of the rotor only so for Suppose this is the value of minus EB. Now, if we draw a parallel line with this one, then the line will look like this, more or less like this. In order to draw a parallel gram, let's connect this two. So these two lines are parallel, these two lines are parallel. Now, here this is the intersection point. Now, the ER will be here this is our er and if we want to draw the is that will be 90 degree apart from er so this is the direction of is if we say this is the direction of is so if we draw a vertical line from here this will cause the real power consumption because this is is cos theta this is the theta angle angle difference between supply voltage and the supply current so this is supply voltage and this portion will cause the reactive power consumption so we can see if the motor is running under no load condition and under over excited condition due to over excited condition this value of eb magnitude of eb will be greater than magnitude of Vs. So this will be the case. When the motor is running under no load condition, the value of alpha will be very, very low. 
under that circumstance the real power consumption by the motor will be the minimum but we can see the current is placed in such a way it's providing reactive power in order to improve power factor as the motor is not connected with any sort of load the motor is solely used for the improvement of power factor hence when the motor is run under this circumstance the synchronous motor is named as synchronous condenser we can see from here the synchronous condenser has a leading power factor this makes it useful for power factor correction of industrial loads we know both transformers and induction motors draw lagging or magnetizing currents from the line on light loads the power drawn by induction motor has a large reactive component and the power factor has a low value so if we connect a synchronous condenser in parallel with those load the synchronous condenser will supply some of the reactive power required by induction motors eventually this improves the plant power factor and reduces the reactive current required from the grid if we draw the v curve for synchronous condenser with the x axis where we'll take field current and this is the y axis where we are going to take armature current for a certain field current it will start from here armature current and it will go almost near to zero value because at unity power factor the current is very very low then again it will be increasing the v curve looks like this we have lagging power factor here lagging power factor where q is consumed so we can say q that means reactive power is consumed and this is the unity power factor case and here we have leading power factor and at this region reactive power is supplied to the system sometimes the synchronous motors are built in such a way those are made to be sold specifically for power factor correction these machines have shafts and that do not even come through the frame of the motor but nowadays conventional static capacitors are more economical to buy and those are used widely than synchronous capacitors or synchronous condenser next we will develop an equation for active power consumed by a synchronous motor with respect to load angle if we draw a typical vector diagram for a synchronous motor suppose this is the supply voltage and this is ab then this is another parallel line with ab and if we connect this two line here we'll get the value of er this is the extension of the axis 90 degree apart from er we'll get i s so this is supply voltage this is torque angle alpha this is minus ab and this is er and this is is this is power factor angle theta now if we draw a vertical line from here and let's name this point a and this point is b here we can say as these two lines are parallel and they are equal this line will also have a magnitude of eb this is the magnitude we are considering now as this is theta this angle will also be theta and as this is alpha as they are parallel line so this angle will also be alpha and here er equals to is excess so we can write this ab equals to ab equals to is excess cos theta okay is yes, excess cos theta again with respect to this ab eb cos alpha represents this portion and eb sin alpha represents ab so we can say ab is equal to eb sin alpha 
by equating these two equations, we can say is xs cos theta equals to eb sin alpha. We are considering magnitude only. Uh, we can write is cos theta equals to eb over xs sin alpha. This alpha is the torque angle which depends on load. Now if we take supply voltage in both sides, Vs Is cos theta is equal to Vs. We can take the magnitude here, magnitude here, or Is as well. All these parameters are magnitude. Eb over Xs sine alpha. This Vs Is cos theta is the real input power so we can say p input equals to vs eb xs by alpha this is the active power consumed by a synchronous motor with respect to load angle now if we change the load angle if we increase load then the load angle will be changed Accordingly, the input power consumed by the motor will be increased. And from the equation, it is apparent that when the sine alpha is equals to 1, then P in will have the maximum value. Under that circumstance, the P in max will be equals to Vs EB over Xs.